Friday morning, it's supposed to be a dry day, a bit overcast. We're gonna try and bail that straw of ours and even get Bill's mopped up as well. It's filled the combine up with diesel. The baler camera, someone said we need to plug it in and turn it off and turn it back on again. So it recognise it with it being digital. So we're gonna try that because we didn't try that yesterday, but it's definitely worth a try. If not, <coughs> there must be something quite wrong with the tractor. I want that tractor so I can try the camera, so I'm going to move this one. My Morgan just pulled in with that one because he wants the edge cutter that was behind that. We should uh, need to get these trailers sorted out now so we've got a bit more room in here. Everything got fumigated, you see, they could have had buggies in it. Someone said, uh, was it Sharik? No, Shakira. No, well, I can't remember what someone said in the comments. There's a, a caption for that. Let me have a look. Shake a raker. So a shaker acre or shaker rater is uh, a machine I think McConnell made first for working soil. The PTO one it used to vibrate as the tines went through the soil, busting it up. So I thought it was a cool name. So that probably won yesterday's uh, caption this competition. Should do more of them. Was there some really good ones? I'll just back it up now, like I say, try this camera. Oh, what does that mean? No, there is no steering input via VDX. Don't know. Uh, confirm. Let's find a camera. No camera. See what? Ah, what's happened then? We could do a plug in the ice bus on the other one, really, couldn't we? Yeah, load it in. See, all that's greyed out. That one's not. I don't know what it is. It's not working though, is it? Not working. James is here, James May. It is July, but never mind. There's another joke as well there about Top Gear. The, this is his crusher, it's tandem axle. And just having a quick mooch around it. It's, he runs it off this fast track. It's got overband magnet on it. And when you load it, you load it onto this deck so you can load it with a big bucket. Then it just shakes it forward. Drops in that jaw, so it's a bit like a crusher bucket we used to have, but obviously tractor powered. So he's been doing a job up the road, crushing something for someone and parking here. Looks a bit of an animal, to be fair. I think it looked better on a 728 though. I'm gonna put the combine back in the shed out of the way. There's the pigeon. We're gonna have a look and see if the OSR. Uh, the oil seed will cut as well in a bit, but we'll just get this out of the way so we can fill the sprayer up because John's going to go and spray someone's maze. Should probably turn it off now, shouldn't I? Or maybe leave the please be patient on the back. Maybe put something else underneath it, what do you think? Does that fan sound loud? I'll do. This straw is still, still a bit damp underneath. So it wants shaking out again. But we shake it out with a twin rotor tether, it'll probably end up dead wide. But fear not. Because we've got the rake on the front, we can pull it together and then shake it out so it doesn't end up going too far, too wide. It just needs a good turning really, just so it can get uh, through it. And what's dried with the sun now can then underneath get dried. Just such a big chunk of it you see we're just going to try it first with just the rear one on just to see how wide it does throw it because the, the bigger the row the best as long as we can row it back up when we come to bail it without having to come back twice but if we throw it more than six meters we might struggle then to pull it back in mm, 
Is that more than six metres? Third width, isn't it? That shook it out quite wide. Don't know if you can feel it. There's probably more breeze than there is sun. So we're going to row it up. And hopefully the bottom will become the top and it'll get the wind blowing through it. But if it doesn't work, then at least it's when we then tread it back out again, we won't end up with it more than six metres wide. So I ate wet straw. We've slowed the hydraulic flow down, so it's not throwing it up as much now. We could probably still slow it a little bit more. There's hardly any breeze after we made that decision. <laughs> and yeah, so we're just gonna go with the original plan. Pull it together, but drive slightly offset. So it pulls it to some fresh ground and then leave the tether on the back just to shake it back out again. And it's had a damn good turn in then. And Rob's just going to go a bit slower so pull some of these lumps a bit better. Oh, there's a breeze again. We slowed that down so it's not throwing it over the top. That wheel probably wants to go down a little bit. And then that's then really fluffing it up again now. But it's not too wide a row, so when he comes bailing later with the rake on the front, he'll be fine. Yeah, that looks like the wet's all on the top now because it's a darker colour. Ah, no, there's a breeze back again. But yeah, I'm happy now. It, it's it's quite a consistent row. There's no lumps, really. The wet seems to now be on the top and the dry seems to be on the bottom because the front's sort of folding it in. Every bit of it's been moved. It can catch a bit of wind and it, it's maximising the sun. So give it till after dinner and we should bail that. But at least he'll just drop the tether off the back and put the baler on and he's away come to look at this field of osr see if we can cut it we probably could cut it still a little bit of greening though it's been sprayed off over two weeks now it's where the pigeons have held it back where it's very ripe though it isn't shedding yet and we haven't got any massive wind forecast there might be a thunderstorm tomorrow but i think i think we'll leave it a little bit because what we don't want is a load of green grains in the sample then it means it's not saleable but equally we don't want to leave it too long where the green grains catch up and the other ones start to shed but i don't think it's catching any harm for a few days so if it brightens up like it is now got a bit of sun now out hopefully that'll help with the straw it's like this on and off till maybe next week get in the early next week i think I just, we could rush in but i don't think there's any point i might regret that decision it might rain for the next two weeks now but um don't want a pile of green stuff in the shed when you come to this end of the field though there's a bit shed there but i don't know where the that's just the birds coming out the hedgerow i think on balance the bit that is green is so small it will blend in the rest of the field doesn't look too bad at all or if we come and cut it and end up leaving three four acres in the middle whatever but the good crop is the most ripe where the pigeons left it alone so we'll probably get it in today this was the first field of beans we've sown now i know that's a particularly tall one but it is pretty decent considering the conditions just a little bit of bit of brown disease uh, the chocolate spot mooching in so i think we, they're not the fungicides we can't use the same fungicides we used to use we can put something on it i think stop it Stop it taking hold. It's a bit more advanced than the others. That's why I came to have a look at it. But John can spray this now actually before he goes off spraying that maze because he's doing it after dinner now. This one's in the corner of the field. Can you see already how brown it is? But look at them pod numbers. Two, five, six, six seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. In fact, I'll, I'll count them off camera and let you know. 47 pods just on that one now if you imagine some years when you get a drought you get three or four pods on hopefully they're going to return something this year in fact a decent yield on them because of the massive acreage we've got would pretty much pay for the quad track in one season that just shows um, how much risk is in growing the crop really wouldn't pay for a brand new one though this is some of the skyfall. It's not particularly tall, 
but still still coming out of the boot in places it's going to be late cutting hopefully it'll yield better than than a winter wheat a bit of rye grass in it and stuff but on a whole i'm glad i made the decision to put this in rather than more spring barley these pedestals were fumigated the other night in this shed oscar's going to wash them all off now then they're ready for when the osr starts to come in monica's here all the way from poland checking the windows for the offices the baler was absolutely filthy so oscar's just swilling it off now the bale spike has made it out of the workshop so morgan's really excited to use it did you run out of paint? To be fair, where the serial number's going? Oh, right, okay. Mon Monica's just giving us some tape measures, so it's worth a calling. <laughs> She's hiding. <laughs> the good thing about fences, I can couple up to this trailer now on this angle because I don't need the link arms to operate the pickle pitch. There's a lot of tractors. Your, your link arms make the pickle pitch go up and down. If I zoom the hitch out now, Link arms on, Captain. That strap big enough? I think so. Look about. It's a nice picture with the backdrop of the trees, isn't it? What a picture. See Rob coming now. Proper job. You can probably hear off the camera, there's a bit of a breeze now. He's gonna dive across into this field next. We're obviously nearer the coast. Back from dropping the trailer at Bill's, gonna go and cut some OSR now. That's the field of OSR. We've got blue sky now. Just putting the side knives on. Quite heavy though, aren't they? Not like them John Deere ones that didn't have a motor that had their own drive. So we take the dividers off the front, slide them in that gap, fasten that clamp down and plug them pipes in. And off we go. The other combine Morgan, we had to slide the knife forwards, pull pins out, slide it forwards even more. Get filler plates out the box, put the filler plates in, push it back in, then mess around, put the side knives on. This, two side knives and away you go. Or if you're in a hurry, you just put one on. Oh. Easy. That's now converted for OSR, so let's go. That's it there, you can see it chopping away at that end there. Four tonne nearly then. Yeah. 3.5, 3.7. This is probably the best bit of the field as well. I'm quite flat this side. This bit of the field looks pretty decent. But the yield meter isn't particularly reading high. 3.13 maybe. Oh, 3.37 it just said then. It wants to be five really to, to properly pay. Still about 3.3. This is the other side of the field and again it's not too bad. It's just in the middle there where it was most eaten. It says it's, oh, it says 9.3, didn't know oh, 25, don't know what happened then. <laughs> it was reading 6.7 a minute ago. Black gold. Bit of weed in the top of it. Always throws itself to the top. That's uh, about 500 pound a ton at the moment, OSR. Just nicely cruising now, saying it's 7.4% moisture. Where it's good, it's doing 3.7 tons a hectare. I mean, most of it's doing about 2.8, which isn't ideal. I mean, what we're we down to here, 2.82. Uh, yeah, it might average two and a half ton per acre, which is because obviously there's a bird patch over there with a completely eaten by pigeons. Little bird patch down there that was a bit flooded. So, 
it's about 65 acres, might be 65 ton off it. 500 quid in tone, what's that? 30 grand. What's it cost me to grow? 29 and a half. I don't know. Um, I'll have a look back. See, it wasn't cheap because the 65 acres made it. There was some sown twice. I think in total we probably drilled three, 400 acres of seed, so we used that much seed. And we've only 65 acres left because the fleet beat let it all at the beginning of the beginning of, all, uh, beginning of September. I don't think I'm growing it again. I might broadcast a bit into the uh, wild bird mix and see if it's there in the spring, maybe. But I think Bill's giving it one last chance as well. Because he's a similar boat to us, drilled 250, 200 acres. And only 45 acres has made it to, to harvest. But we'll keep pushing through. A quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dogs. Just ran out of the crop. Can you see them two big hawk things circling? Wonder will they disappear when Oscar gets his drone out from over there. Two years ago, there was a young lad hanging around watching me move straw and he had to go with a Merlot. Now he works here and now he's driving the combine on the field. Well, it's actually driving itself on the GPS, but well, don't, don't tell them. But, it, but we won't tell anyone that. Just cover that screen up there, right? <laughs> it's a bit weedy, this bit here. John's just come and took over from me. I'm going to take the sprayer back to the yard. Morgan's back with another trailer. He's just been keeping up on his own, to be fair, because it's not, not the highest of yielding crops, OSR. I'm going to drop Oscar off at home and then see how Rob's getting on bailing that straw now. I saw Telly on the route that Joe's borrowing as well. While I'm near the spray, I'll quickly do the birthdays, but most three of them are anniversaries. So we've got Irene Halliwell, 98, happy birthday. Dave and Emma uh, Morrissey, uh, they're getting married in Spain, I think, today. Henry Masters, happy anniversary. And Steve and Sandra, 39 year anniversary. And we're at £71,062. Right, let's go and try Morgan's spike out, see how that's working. So I think the spikes ended up JCB yellow, but it kind of matches the trailer on the back. Anyway, if we're going down the road, perfect vision and it's folded up safely out of the way. There's Rob multitasking. Perfect that, innit? It's allowed it to have the sun all day on it. Shackle undone, it has got no chain on it, hopefully we won't. We won't lose it, and I've just nearly squashed myself because that fell down, but I do want to show you how it worked. <laughs> Other than the demo we did before, let's see how the spike performs. Nice. Easy. Well, we've got, <laughs> we've got blue skies. Three bales on it. Carrying it, no problem. Fourth could slide off the top unless you group you stab them higher up the bale, the bottom one. Probably need some dummy spikes, some little short ones on them top rail stops, stuff sliding off sideways. But it's not snapped in half yet, so that's a good sign. I don't know if they need to put the linkage down a little bit. Where John was spraying today, it was Alison Morton's birthday, so happy birthday. Victoria forgot to put you on the birthday bump, but she did text me just in time. We slowed them down even more so it's not bubbling it over the top because it was nearly ramming it to the middle too quick and trying to block before it went under the roller. So now we've got the hydraulics just literally just tickling it to the middle, working far better. Probably run it ever so slightly lower, maybe for the linkage. That wheel's barely touching, isn't it? Full 
load. This next bale comes out the baler. Rob's just ejected it now. I'm guessing this field's probably going to run about a ton to the acre of straw as well, to be honest. Perfect timing here with Morgan. Throw a few straps on that and then uh, we're back. Oh, unless he goes back down the track so we don't have to go down the road. Maybe that's better actually. It's a bit bumpy, but it's worth it. First load of straw of 2024 now heading back to the yard. Morgan's going to quickly put the same one and rip some headlands up. Rob's going to come and pick the track for OSR up and I'm going to put the spike off and go the header. The sun's now going down on the combine. John is right there. He's probably got another pass and a half to do. I'm going to edit while I'm waiting for him to finish. I'm on the Merlot ready to pick the header up and Rob's on his way to pick that last trailer up. And that is the OSR done in an afternoon. Don't know the final weight yet. Uh, we started off, some of it was dry. This will need drying, but we'll see. But not broke any records, never was. Anyway, if you made it this far, click like, appreciate that. And uh, if you're not subscribed, subscribe, it doesn't cost you anything. And I will see you all tomorrow.